Zebra's Device Diagnostic Tool, DDT, quickly tests the hardware, battery, software, and connectivity on most Zebra Android mobile computers to determine device health and functionality. This video will give you a quick overview of the tests that can be performed with the Device Diagnostic Tool. Start by finding the Diagnostic Test icon on your device. Touch it to open the application. Once inside you will see the tests that are available. Now, let's go through the tests one by one. The scanner test checks whether the scanner is operable. To complete this test, you will need to have a barcode available to scan. When you are ready, press the scanner test option on the main menu. Press run test to open the test window. You will be prompted to scan a barcode using the scan button on your mobile computing device. The scanner test will indicate whether the barcode scan was successful or unsuccessful. In this example, the scan was successful, as indicated by the green check marks on the screen. Next is the button test, which checks the operation of your device's physical buttons, the push to talk button, the scan triggers, and the volume controls. Press the button test option on the main menu. Press run tests to open the test window. Follow the instructions on the screen. Press your device's physical buttons one by one. As you press each button, if the button is functioning properly, a green check mark will appear to the left of the item on the screen. Next is the touch screen test, which tests the device's touch display. Press the touch screen test option on the main menu. Then press run tests. Swipe across all parts of the touch screen and its color will change to blue. If all areas of the screen turn blue, your touch screen is functioning properly. Bluetooth tests check whether the Bluetooth feature is functioning correctly. Press the Bluetooth tests option on the main menu. Press run tests to open the test window. The Bluetooth tests will identify whether your Bluetooth radio has powered off and on successfully, whether the radio is functioning correctly, and whether your device is discoverable or visible to other devices via Bluetooth. Wi-Fi tests check whether the Wi-Fi radio is functioning correctly. When running the Wi-Fi tests, you must be connected to your Wi-Fi network. If you run the tests and are not connected to a Wi-Fi network, a message will prompt you to connect. Press the Wi-Fi tests option on the main menu. Then press run tests to open the test window. Be aware that your screen may turn gray momentarily. The Wi-Fi tests will identify whether the Mac network address is valid and whether your Wi-Fi radio has powered off and on successfully. The ping tests measure network connectivity and response times. These tests also provide additional information regarding your Wi-Fi signal strength, ESSID and IP address. For devices with an Android operating system prior to version 10, the ESSID will be automatically included in the information provided about your device. For devices using version 10 or later, you must enable location services in your device settings to view the ESSID in your DDT test results. If location services are not enabled, the test will still run. However, the ESSID field will display the message, location not enabled. The battery test check the battery status and provides information about the battery such as battery level, capacity and manufacture date. Press the battery test option on the main menu. Then press run tests and information about your battery will appear. Scroll down to review additional information about your battery. The WAN tests check for operation of the WAN radio and the device's WAN connectivity. If your device is not equipped with a SIM card, you may skip this test. To proceed with running this test, press the WAN tests option on the main menu. Then press run tests and information about your WAN card will appear including SIM state, voice state, data state and signal strength. Note, the SIM card is not detected. The WAN tests will fail and the first result will indicate that a SIM card is absent. The audio test checks whether the device's microphone and speaker are functioning properly. This test requires you to record your voice and then play it back to verify that both the microphone and speaker are working on your mobile device. Press the audio test option on the main menu. Then press run tests. Press record to capture your voice. Once your voice is recorded, press stop and then press play to listen to your voice recording and ensure that you are hearing the same thing you recorded. Press pass if you hear or you record it. Otherwise, press fail. Finally, the SD card tests checks whether there is an SD card present and whether the user has read and write access. Press the SD card tests option on the main menu. Then press run tests. Information about your SD card will appear including SD card availability, read and write access, 
as well as the total space and current free space available on the car. Additionally, you can run all the nine DDT tests sequentially. To do this, press the Run Test button at the bottom of the main menu, and this will run all tests from top to bottom. Now that you are familiar with the DDT tests, learn how you can change your settings. You should be aware that when using multiple Android user accounts on a single device, the device diagnostic tool use and functionalities only apply to the active primary user. To access settings, press the three dots at the upper right corner of the main menu. Then select Settings. The Settings screen provides the file path for importing or exporting the configuration file that DDT uses to specify and save your application preferences and settings. The Settings screen also allows you to change the name, location, and size of the history and status log files. Note: These parameters are usually predetermined by your company's IT department. It is not recommended that you change these settings except under guidance by your IT department or help desk. Besides changing your settings, you can also configure and schedule your tests. To do this, click the three dots at the upper right corner of the main menu. Then select Configure Tests. This will show you all the tests that are available to run in the application. You can turn on or off tests and subtasks of each test, as well as adjust the timeout for each test. It is recommended that these configurations are left in their default state, unless specifically instructed by your company's IT department or help desk. You can also automatically schedule tests to run on your device. To do this, click the three dots at the upper right corner of the main menu, then select Job Scheduler. Here you can see and edit your scheduled tests. You can also schedule a new test by pressing the plus sign. You can determine the time, day and type of tests that you want to run. If one of the diagnostic tests fails and you need additional help resolving an issue, you can access the DDT downloads and support page on zebra.com using the help button. On the main menu, click on the three dots at the upper right hand corner and select help to be directed to the online resources. Refer to the resources and guides section for more information on the device diagnostic tool. If you require additional support, those who receive technical support through their company, help desk or through an authorized Zebra reseller should pursue those avenues before contacting Zebra. If your product is covered by hardware warranty or a Zebra One Care maintenance contract, contact Zebra Technical Support using the contact information available at zebra.com slash support contacts. Your training on how to use the device diagnostic tool is now complete.